I mean, I truly believe that Vermont is going to be the first state that comes up with comprehensive, single-payer, universal access for health care. And when we do that, that's going to give us, it'll give us a tremendous financial advantage in a budget because a lot of money we're spending on health care we will not have to spend. But to our business communities and to our schools and to individuals, when, when they know that their health care is going to be paid for, um, and that they have access to it, and it doesn't matter if they're employed or un unemployed, um, that's, that's just going to be a tremendous difference. So Vermont will be even more attractive than it already is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that can unleash creativity when someone says, geez, I had this great idea, but I didn't want to leave my job I didn't like so much to, um, because right. I need to hold on to my health That's care. right, I, I couldn't leave my job. Right. Um, getting back a little bit to the internet, I'm tying in with some Vermont values. Um, Looking at the uh, 06 Tarrant Senate campaign, and it was clear he did a lot of anonymous internet sketchiness, and it was not very well received in this state. I, th I think he actually hired someone from uh, somewhere else where the, those tactics work well, and it man managed to get someone in the Senate. Um, but it didn't fly here, and I just am asking each uh, candidate to pledge that they will, you know, their campaign will not. Um, uh, anonymously use the internet to uh, move the distort narrative. Things, yeah, right. distort things, move the narrative in a certain direction. Um, and uh, just, will you take that pledge? That's is that a, an easy one? That's an easy <laughs> pledge. I mean, that, you know, that, that really is. Like, because again, I think on the whole, um, negative campaigning uh, does not tend to work in this state. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and as a candidate, we've had um, I have had a number of negative ads and mailings done against me as a candidate, and it's always, you know, when that happens to you, you tend, you tend to want to come roaring back, you know, and say, how, you know, mm, right, but um, right. I, I, uh, I have real faith in Vermonters and Vermonters' ability to sort through what's the truth and what's fiction and what's distortion, and um, to be uh, really displeased when people go the negative route. I think mostly when people, when campaigns go a negative route, what they're really saying is they don't have anything to say. Yeah, yeah, and it may be, an, an, um, well, in Terrence came in somewhat of an admission that he couldn't win. <laughs> I mean, they're just, <laughs> right. you know. Um, so thank you for that. Um, now, the session just ended a week and a half right. ago, right. and um, how, um, what's your assessment of, of it? I mean, a lot happened. Um. We did. It was certainly a, a very hectic session. When we started and we knew that we were confronted with a $154 million deficit, um, I don't know that any of us were, we didn't know how we were going to get out of there in a reasonable manner. Mm -hmm. And um, we accomplished a lot of really good things this year besides being able to balance a budget. Um, we've, uh, we restructured the judiciary, I think, in a, in a very positive manner. Um, we, of course, there's the little issue of Vermont Yankee and making sure that they are going to close on time. Right, right. It's, uh, it's easy how fast that time goes by and we say, nope, they are, uh, and I think with that vote, really moving the state forward towards being serious about developing a comprehensive energy plan for our, for our future. Mm -hmm. You know, that certainly w involves Hydro-Quebec, but uh, hopefully some long-term contracts with, with other folks and, of course, as we slowly but surely build up the renewables in this state. So we have a portfolio that's a, uh, that's a good balance sure. of renewables and, uh, and our baseload power that we need to have, but also having it be affordable. I th I think a very important part of that energy issue is also efficiency and conservation. We have tremendous efficiency programs in this state, and it's amazing to me how few Vermonters really take advantage of them. Because I think part of that is I think people think that um, if they're going to save energy, they have to make some sacrifice in their life. Sure. And changing out their light bulbs means they're sitting in the dark, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> you know, and um, and it doesn't. Right. You know, you can you can cut your consumption of electricity um, 
by 15, 20, 30 percent and see no difference in your lifestyle whatsoever. Uh, one of the, I think, the really interesting things that Efficiency Vermont is doing with the food bank is uh, they give them cases of light bulbs so that when folks go to the food bank, they can also take light bulbs to switch out the so that they thing. have, um, and, and we're investing dollars in our affordable housing because a lot of our affordable housing stock was built 20, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And of course, what we know about efficiency is so much different. And going back and retrofitting those apartments can save uh, folks on fixed incomes Twenty, thirty dollars a month, and that's a lot of money. Yeah, that's yeah, a lot sure. of money. Period. That's but when you're on a fixed income, that's a lot of money. So, so I think really pushing the efficiency and conservation is something we need to do a better job of. Great, great. Um, the the budget that passed is um, how's it? You're it, it is. You're saying it's in balance. How's it's it? Balanced. How's the how the numbers work in there? Is it is it uh, set up to be? remain balanced or is it a sort of one-time well, no, fixes? No, we or? have uh, fortunately this year, um, and of course this is the 11 budget that we're just finishing, but we used the rest of our federal stimul stimulus money, which is why next year we know we're going in with another mm, about a hundred million dollar deficit again. Okay. Because all of the federal stimulus money will be gone. Okay. And, um, Which was part of the intent of that stimulus yeah, money, is yeah, to help the states that, out. That's right. It was to help the states out. And of course, the hope was that we were going to be, the economies were going to be getting a lot stronger than they have been. But um, that's okay. Right. We'll, we'll, we're, we're, we're figuring it out. Yeah, and we're in the same boat with 49 other states. That's, we're not some outlier, that, anti that's right. business we, outlier, right? We aren't. <laughs> and, um, and one of the parts of the budget that is, um, that's gotten a lot of coverage and people are very uh, skeptical about is challenges for change. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been and I remain a real champion of challenges for change. And that idea started actually from our government operations committees the year before. And we put language in the budget that said, uh, let's, let's get some folks in who understand making structural change to government because change is one of those things that everybody likes to talk about, mm -hmm. but when you actually get around to it, it's suddenly not quite such a good idea. Well, what, what happened with challenges for change, and the, the concept is really pretty easy. Um, it says, let's take, a, uh, take some part that, take the Agency of Natural Resources, and let's take cleaning up Lake Champlain. And it says, here's what we're gonna do. What are the outcomes that we want? How are we going to measure those outcomes? And here's how much money we're spending on them. Um, and it's really that simple, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, if you go to uh, the Agency of Human Services and let's deal with kids before they get to school. There are currently 11 or 12 different programs and of course they all have their little paper trails and the things that you have to do. If we say, all right, the goal is to say, what are the outcomes that we want for children from birth through going to school? And you list those outcomes very carefully and how are you going to measure those outcomes and then say, forget all the strings attached, here's how much money you have to spend as a whole. How would you spend that money when you want to get to those outcomes? Um, and and uh, people like the idea. Uh, state employees are having a lot of great ideas. But when it comes to actually implementing something that different, and you've been in a system where it's here's my program, you mm -hmm. know, here's how the money and here are the lines that I have to account for it. It's really difficult to change that behavior. Right. Does that, um, I guess, force collaboration so that those um, isolated 11 or 12 agencies now have to interact in a way that's, that's um, hopefully beneficial in the long run. You got it. Clearly you understand it. There what? it is. Because it is. It's the getting to, to functioning on what you want. And very traditionally how it isn't just government functions. Well, here's, here are all the programs we've had and here's how much money we had last year. So how much more are we spending this year or how much are we cutting this year? And it's like, no, don't, don't do that. Decide what you want for outcomes. And just just going through the process of having a conversation between the different agencies and folks on the outside who provide the services, having a real conversation about what are the outcomes that you want, 
immediately begins to change the entire conversation and the behavior. Mm -hmm. So my goal as governor is to take all of state government and have it be on here are the outcomes, here's how we're going to measure them, here's the amount of money that we're spending on it. Because in a, in a state where we spend about four billion dollars a year, um, we ought to be able to say here's what we want to buy and know if we're getting what we want. And if we aren't, then you make your changes so you are getting what you want.